Hello and welcome to the Dynamic CCTV technical update. Today we're going to take a quick look at how to set up the latest second generation intercom firmware uh, which has just been released and it introduces a new set of procedure based on a SIP 2.0 security protocol edition which is basically an extra layer of security that requires a registration password to be entered into your devices and that just gives an extra layer of security when they're obviously creating a handshake with each other. The procedure in which the actual units are set up with each other has changed so we're going to, just going to run through how to add a main indoor to a, an outdoor unit and then obviously additional sub indoor and sub outdoor units. So you can see I've got um, four units added to my IVMS 4200 already and I've, I've conveniently named them for ease of setup basically and the, the procedure in which you activate and add them hasn't changed that's the same as it's always been. If you've got a, a working intercom system in use and you upgrade to the latest firmware it will restore the units uh, the unit settings so you will have to set them up again they will stop working and that's purely down to the fact that the that the procedure has changed and the actual parameters that you need to enter in order to set them up has changed so the latest outdoor modular and villa station firmware is 2.2.3 with a build of 200805 and the latest indoor station firmware that introduces sip 2.0 is 2.1.10 with a build of 200713 so at the time of making this video, they're the latest firmwares or the initial firmwares that introduced SIP 2.0 protocol. So the first thing to mention is that your IVMS 4200 does need to be a specific version. You need to be using 3.3.1.8 in order to set these units up with the new SIP 2.0. Previous versions don't have the capabilities, so keep that in mind. You can get uh, this version of IVMS from Dynamic CCTV or from iVision's own UK download portal as well. So just keep a note of that version. So the first thing we need to do is go into the, the indoor main configuration screen, which is our top unit there. You can do that by clicking on the cog and we get our typical menu appearance appear. And what we need to do initially is go down to network and we've got an option at the bottom now called group network settings. So we click on that and what we've got in there is a room number for your particular indoor station and also a registration password. These are the two things we need to set up initially. So your room number, obviously I've got one already in there, so I'm going to leave that, but obviously if you have additional main indoor stations, you, you would need to obviously put them on different rooms uh, to differentiate them. So you select a registration password, I think for between eight and 16 digits, the usual sort of rules apply. So I'm just going to pop one in there. This is not the activation password, this is a different password. It's the SIP registration password. So we're going to save that like so, so that's saved room one with the registration password included. So I'm going to come out of there now and go into the main outdoor. We've got a few few settings in here. Now straight away you'll notice the way the actual appearance of the menu GUI is more sort of web orientated. That's new with these the latest firmware. So you've got a more sort of a web based menu structure. So we need to go down to where it says intercom. And what we've got in there is we've got press button to call, first of all. So that's where we would select our room number there, which we've also got, we've already got one in. Number 01 is from the main unit, which only has one call button. If you add a, a DSKDKK added to your main unit or, or, or multiple KKs added, you can select them from this drop down list here and select sub module. And you can see they've got an additional six buttons and I can assign room numbers to them as well. So if you add multiple indoor stations, main indoor stations, you can give each of your call buttons the appropriate room number there so we're going to stay on the main unit there and leave that as one there is actually a handy little schedule setting just to the right hand side now which allows you to set your own sort of template schedule template to when the outdoor station can call through that'll be covered in another video but that's quite handy you can set your schedule up from here and choose when and when you want the outdoor to call through to the indoor so if we save that and go across to device management we can add our indoor station to the outdoor station here's one thing i just quickly need to do back in the other menu which is go to the session settings tab there and again put the registration password in which again is the sip 2.0 password not the activation password so we can save that like so so we choose indoor station on the right which is what we need we want to be adding to this unit so if we click on the add tab left hand side we've got indoor station at the top there so we've got two passwords we've got the activation password to put in we've also got the registration password to put in we've got the serial number of the main indoor station which is digit serial number which is usually a letter followed by eight numbers so i'm just going to pop my main indoor station serial number in which i've conveniently written down like so uh, we've got to put a room number in, which we know is one. We've got to put the IP address of the unit in as well. Like 
so and then the additional network settings need popping in and then we add the port which is 8000 and we click OK now initially you'll get a message saying that the unit is offline, that's normal, it can take a few minutes to form a handshake with the indoor station so don't worry about that. You can speed it up a little bit by choosing to synchronise the two devices there. What normally works is just coming out of the menu like so and then going back in. And you can see we've now got our indoor station online. We can see the parameters there for that. So it's a case of repeating that procedure to add additional main indoor stations to your outdoor station. If you were dealing with obviously a, an apartment with more than one room or more than one residence, you can add additional main indoor stations to the unit. So that's how you add an indoor station to an outdoor station. So now we're gonna look at adding a sub indoor station to the main indoor station. So we've got our sub indoor station there already conveniently added. So again, we click on the cog. We're going to go down to the network tab and under the group network settings we can choose to, to change the indoor station to an indoor extension like so and it asks us which number we want that to be. Obviously you can add up to five indoor extensions so we're going to just choose that to be number one. And then if we go back down into the network group settings you can see we've got indoor station one it's in there. We have the IP address for our main indoor station and we can enter our SIP password, registration password in there. You can keep all your passwords the same. I, I, I think it's good practice to keep your SIP password different to your activation password just for security reasons, but you can unify the, all, them all together, make it easier to set them up. So if we save them settings there like so and come out of there, now we're going to need to go into our main indoor. Instead of going into the net, we're going, we're going to go into intercom. And at the very bottom, we've got SIP number settings. And this is similar to adding an indoor station, a main indoor to the main outdoor. We will need to add our sub indoor to the main indoor through this screen so we click on the add tab we've got indoor extension again we need to add the the nine digit seal number and we need to add the ip details and then the usual additional network parameters need to go in and then we've got the actual password of the device so this is the activation password and it's number one we save that like so and if we come out of that screen we can see there that our sub indoor station is now registered with the main indoor station so that's how we add a a sub indoor station to the main and it's a case of again just repeating that procedure for additional sub indoor stations up to a maximum of five and remember to change the indoor station number which is the last thing we're going to do for this video is, is uh, just demonstrate how to add a sub outdoor unit to the main outdoor so we've got our two units there already added so we need to click on the the sub outdoor configuration screen and we've got obviously the web menu that we've seen earlier on and if we go down to intercom again and into configuration we've got obviously we can see there we've got our door station number which is zero which indicates a main outdoor station so we need to change that to a one to indicate a first substation So we click on save and we wait for the unit to reboot. So once the unit's rebooted we can go into the session settings tab and we need to add our password into there. One thing you can see is the main door station IP address has, has been filled in there as 200.157 which is our main outdoor unit. So we add our registration password to the sub station and that's all gone through okay so we need to come out of the sub outdoor and back into the main outdoor and we go back into the previous screen that we were in when we were adding the main indoor which is into under intercom and under device management and you can see that we've got our indoor station still there and online but the top right corner device type we need to choose sub door station now and that allows us to add our sub door station to the main unit so there's the uh, pop-up screen that we were familiar with from when we added our indoor station so we select 
sub door station at the top and we add the settings back in so we've got the activation password we've got the registration password serial number of the unit and we've got the sub number we've got the IP address and the additional network parameters need to go in there and port 8000 so that's the sub first sub outdoor station added to the main outdoor and you can see it's showing offline again as I said earlier that that's normal and it can take uh, a few minutes several minutes to come through and normally we can give it a little bit of a nudge by synchronizing and coming out of the menu and back in There you can see our first sub outdoor station is now online. So it's a case of repeating that procedure for multiple sub outdoor stations up to 16 on this latest firmware. You can actually, if we move back to the indoor station, there is a little configuration cog there which allows us to view and edit certain settings within the outdoor station, within the indoor station from the outdoor station menu, which is quite handy. And we can also export our station settings as well, and that'll come off as an XLS file like so so that's handy if you obviously after commissioning's finished you can obviously take an export and keep that with site records and obviously if if you need to upload those settings onto another station in the future then you've got those and it's a handy sort of quick procedure to re-upload them from that tab there so that's how you set up the new second gen units with the latest sip 2.0 firmware there is quite a few additional features and functions i've touched on a few during this video but we are going to be covering these through separate short videos just to make it easy for you to navigate through them and obviously pinpoint exactly what you want to find out about but obviously this video today was based purely on how to set the units up so i hope you found it interesting and you can obviously utilize this video yourselves we are actually producing some pdf guides as well which will be available direct from dynamic cctv to assist you with the the latest uh, configuration procedure Ages. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Any additional questions on the, the latest firmware for the second gen intercoms, please get in touch with Dynamic CCTV Technical Department. We'll be more than happy to assist you with any queries and questions that you have. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.